Okay, hopefully this will be one of the shortest videos I've done for a while. Um, I have an existing ISE project and I want to be able to integrate core generated uh, items in it. So for example, I've already used the core generator to create these two um, debugging ports, the ICON and the ILA, the uh, controller and the logic analyzer. Um, I've instantiated them into my project. I can build my project with ISE. Everything is fine. If I pay attention though to some of the file locations, I see that the files are actually stored in alternative directories. They're not stored in the normal Verilog source directories. And if I were to try to build this file right now um, with ISE, it's all fine. However, if I go back to EDK and I try to use EDK to build this file, we won't be able to find the core generated files. What I've done is I've gone into the directory where my core is generated. So when I did the initial uh, create peripheral with EDK, it created this pcores directory, it created this um, core folder for me. And, and then in here are the data, the dev, and the HDL files. In order to have uh, XPS, EDK, uh, the platform studio, be able to build a module that includes core generated items, we've got to do some manual steps. First, if I go to the devl directory, and I go to the progenav directory, uh, in there we'll see the IP core dir. And sure enough, there are the two icon1 and ilo1 files that I created. The first step to doing these is I need these ngc files and the .v files to be um, placed in specific locations in this project in order for EDK to see them. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the V files, the Verilog files, and I'm going to copy them back to uh, up a couple directories and into my HDL Verilog folder. So the icon1 and the ilo1.v file are there now. And these files are really nothing more than just kind of wrappers um, that are used to give some structure to the Verilog, but they need to be there. Um, so clearly the ILA module has a lot more going on to it than an empty module. Um, and that information is actually going to be in the NGC file. And to, to where those files go is rather than going into the HDL directory, they go into the netlist directory. Now, if your project does not have a netlist directory at the same level, let me list these directories again, at the same level as your data, devl, and HDL directory, then you'll need to make this directory. Um, and then you can copy these NGC files. So, V files go into your HDL Verilog, the NGC files get copied into the netlist directory. If you ever change the structure of the generated core, those files also need to be copied into the directories again. Unfortunately, we're not done yet. In the data directory, there's a file um, that we'll have to make and it's going to have the same name as the other files in here, except it's going to be a .bbd file. And this bbd file simply lists the files, the ngc files, and they start off with the word files. So um, files, and on the next line, a comma-separated list of these ngc files, ILA1, ICON1. Still not done. Um, I need to edit the PAO file, which is what lists the files that are part of the project. And I need to add the lines for the ILO1.v and the ICON1.v in that they're Verilog. Typically, you can just copy and paste lines from other parts of your module and then just change these names. So now we've told um, EDK that we have the V files, we've told EDK that we have the NGC files. We have one more important step to do, and that's in the MPD file. 
And in the MPD file, we need to add these two lines right there. We need to say that um, style is mixed and option run underscore ngc build equals true. After we've added those two things, at this point now, um, we're done. We should be able to go back to EDK um, and build the project, and it should build just fine. Um, that should be it. I hope we got all the, the details here. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. Thanks.